Here we are looking at the combination coupe interior with the only part that's not restored, the steering wheel. We're about to show you how we're going to do that. information this happens to be called a banjo steering wheel largely because you see the various metal spokes here and how they're set up the banjo steering wheel was actually the proper steering wheel for a custom supercharger that's what this car was you could also order this as an accessory item from Graham in order to remove it from the car there are three screws on the back side and you go in with a screwdriver roughly like this and you go in and take the three screws off and you can remove your steering wheel not quite that simple but at least it will start to remove the front of it we'll show you how that goes here in just a minute okay i've actually pulled the three screws out here before though if you were doing this on any car always disconnect the battery you're going to be blaring the horn at yourself but the three screws are now pulled i'm actually holding this together i'm going to lift this off you'll see there's a ring that comes off and as I just dropped, that's the actual horn button, assembly off the gram. Then you have your ring here that you can activate your horn with. That's taken off. And by the way, in case anybody wonders, these are almost always broken. A good uh, restoration shop that deals with chrome and usually put them back together. This was put back together for me by Paul's Chrome Plating when they plated it. Now down inside your steering wheel, you're going to find you've got a big nut, a little special washer here, and your wiring for your steering wheel. Now unless you've created some way to disconnect it here, it's going to, have to be disconnected down under the hood in order to get the whole assembly off. So I'm going to go check. I think I actually put a disconnect down in there so I could pull this. Eventually I'd have to fish it back through. But if I haven't, another thing you could do is you could cut it up here and you could actually solder it back together and put it back when you were done working on the steering wheel. But I think I've actually put a disconnect in this car. It's been a number of years, finally getting around to doing the steering wheel. We'll go check that. As I figured, I actually did put a disconnect underneath the hood, but you can also see that I have butt connected this together so I could take it off and remove it. So by releasing the disconnect, I've been able to pull the wire up far enough to actually deal with this and allow me to pull the steering wheel itself. So we'll disconnect this portion here. Then we are going to loosen our steering wheel. We'll tell you the size on that and show you how we're going to take it off. Momentarily, you can see I cut the butt connector out of there. What I will be able to do is split this, not lose any of the wire on either end. And what I'll probably do in the end is solder this back together with a piece of heat shrink over it. The result being that it could be unsoldered in the future. Now for getting this nut loose. All right, we've got a large socket here. This is actually an inch and a quarter. So you need an inch and a quarter socket and a good size wrench. Get it off, hold on to the steering wheel and release it. Now if this had been that I hadn't taken it off before, that might have been very hard to do. It might even require a breaker bar if it were a little rusty. Now I'm not going to take it all the way off. You can see I'm hand turning it part way. But I'm leaving it on because now you've got to get the steering wheel loose which can be a lot of trouble or can be easy. That was relatively easy because I've got it coming up just by hitting it, as you saw. So I'm hitting it like this, getting my arms against the steering wheel and hitting it up here. You can also rock it like you saw me at first, but once you get it loose part way, then you take off your nut the rest of the way. If you don't, you're going to hit yourself in the face probably quite hard if this thing comes loose all at once. Now another thing is you might or might not be real concerned about where this thing's going to go back on. Now I happen to know right now it needs to be moved from its current position. It's not coming out right. When you're going down the road you would like this to have both these arms up and this one straight down. Right now I know it's not quite correct. 
So when I go to put this back together, I'm going to try to set it up straight, but then I'm going to have to go drive it and see, is the steering wheel right? I think it may have to be moved over a tooth or two, one side to the other. But I do know it's not quite right where it is. But that's different than actually restoring it. That's just getting it set up right. So we're just going to take it off for now. So you can see there's the steering wheel taken off. A lot of junk just came out of it when I turned it over. Okay. I'm going to try to stand up and junk the, dump the junk out of the car. We can also see that, you know, this is not perfectly cleaned up. We'll show you how we do that too in a little bit. With the steering wheel over here on the workbench, looking at the back of it, you can see, as I said, we need to clean this up. We need to clean up down here at the ends of these little wires. But mostly what we need to look at is you can see all these cracks throughout here. There are a whole series of cracks. The product here originally is a product called Tenite. Tenite was a early plastic created by the Kodak Corporation. And at the time it was really high tech, but what happens here happens after just a few years that the Tenite becomes a problem. Previously, I'd done enough to this, just putting some epoxy in it to hold it in place. That was PC7, which I don't think is the best for the job. It's going to be better to use what we're going to use, which is a pour 15 epoxy putty. But what we're going to do is go through where everywhere one of these cracks exists. We're going to grind it out so that the crack has a large surface area instead of the small surface area of the crack. And then we're going to fill it with epoxy putty. All right, here I have a motor tool with a round sort of burr in it. We're going to see how that's going to do. Might not be what I use for the actual work. seems to work pretty good. What you'll find down here inside is that there is a metal ring about a quarter inch in diameter, maybe it's three eighths, I'm not measuring it, of course, going all the way around. And that's what the spokes are actually welded to. Any place you've got a crack, in this case it doesn't go all the way around because there's PC7 on the other side, so we'll only go that far, but any place there's a crack you got to go through and grind it out. And I must admit that burr works pretty well, so that's a little round burr, works really good to do this. So I'm going to go around and do all of those, and then we'll be back with you.
saw, there was a lot of grinding away to find all the spots where there are cracks that I can find. And we've ground them down to the metal pretty much every single time. Almost all of them are all the way around. There are a couple that actually aren't. And I might find some more little flaws as we go through here. But we'll see. Pretty soon, though, we're going to be ready to start putting some putty into this. Well, as you can see, i got a lot of mess here. What I'm working with now is I've switched to a pointed grinding stone, turned the moto tool down, and I'm going through and widening everything out so I've got lots of surface area to bond to the plastic. <laughs> Completes widening them all out. Next thing I'm going to do is take a piece of steel wool and make sure I get all those little burrs off of here. Nothing difficult, just a little piece of steel wool to do that. Then we'll be back and ready to fill with putty. I'm just going to go through and get these burrs out real quick. When we see them, we get something a little more stubborn, we can always use a knife or something similar. This will take off any real loose stuff. And for the last little bit we'll get a knife and get a few little pieces out of here. Go around with the knife here. Anything else we don't like that we want to get out. Do one side at a time. This isn't about making something pretty right now. It's about making it so that the epoxy will go down in here and stick real well. So we're just taking out loose pieces that would cause air pockets, etc. to form, which we really don't want. All right, now we're going to flip it over and we'll look on the other side. Check for little things we want to get out of here. And I'm just taking parts that might cause there to be air gaps in the putty. Part of the plastic, because of how fast I'm cutting it, obviously melts just a little bit. There isn't too much of this leftover stuff to remove. That looks pretty good. All right, back with the steering wheel on a slightly cleaned up workbench. We're going to switch to using now the epoxy putty by Pour 15. It's a industrial filler. And it'll work really good for this particular job. Comes in A and B parts. And you want to cut off equal portions of the A and equal portion of the B, obviously, using a knife or something similar. They can cut through it and get you equal portions. You're going to knead them together. And we're going to put them in the openings we made. All right, we have equal portions of the two components. Comes wrapped in plastic. Besides the plastic outer casing, we want to take the plastic off, obviously. And we're going to knead these two together until they're one uniform color. Twisting helps. 
as well as obviously squeezing. And just twist and squeeze and twist and squeeze until you get it all kneaded together as one color. It has a 30 minute work time once it's mixed up. Claims it sets in about an hour. I'm actually going to leave it overnight so that it's thoroughly set, ready to sand or contour any way I need to. I'll show you various ways we might do that. As I said, keep twisting and squeezing. They suggest using gloves, but I gotta tell you, if I use gloves, I think this stuff would just stick to the glove, so I'm not using gloves. Although I must admit, some people can be very allergic to epoxy. So I can't say what your situation will be. I just know I can get away with it. Even though it's sticky, it seems to me like the only practical way to do this. As I said, I think the gloves would stick to it something terrible. So I'm going through and kneading it. As you're seeing, it's becoming one color. I'm not getting two colors when I pull it apart anymore. So we're pretty much getting it the way it's supposed to be. Comes out sort of a gray shade. If you look at the original here, it's a little darker. There's a couple of spots I do see that still need to be mixed. So it'll come out a little darker than the white side of it. In some ways, I wish it were obviously darker yet because it'd make it a little easier to tell it's thoroughly mixed. You can tell the different colors, but it'd be nice if it would mix up just a little bit different color than it does. However, I think we got a good mixed epoxy. I can feel it starting to get warm. And the goal here is to get thoroughly pressed down in that each one of these depressions. Now you gotta remember the top of the steering wheel is round, the bottom has finger holds. So you're gonna have to do some contouring here and there to get it to work out. See, I've got a gap in there and I don't want a gap. Add more material. This is one of those cases where it's better to have too much than not enough. Too much can be removed. Not enough is gonna cause you the trouble of having to have to try to go back and add on it when you don't really wanna add small parts of this. I honestly don't believe you'll end up as strong as if you get it right the first time. So it's better to get the stuff thoroughly pressed in here. Flip it over as necessary. I remember the rear has the depressions for fingers or the raises in between. And you can add your depressions back in pretty easy after the fact. Just make sure you get everything thoroughly filled in. You don't really want to be short on this material. So we're just going to keep going around and filling up each one of these sections, which will take a while. Because there are quite a few failure points, as you saw, when I went through and cut them out. And your steering wheel is probably the same way if you're doing one like this. And it won't just be a Graham steering wheel. It'll be like this. It'll be any steering wheel from back in the day. The plastic just isn't as good as the plastic today, but this is something that's going to get to be, for a few of you, maybe a political comment. Plastic doesn't last as long as you've been told. It comes apart, largely because the plasticizer comes out of the plastic and it starts to disintegrate. That's really why you have cracks here. So things won't last as long as you're told they're going to last. That's somewhat of a myth. And you can really find that out when you're doing a steering wheel, but lots of other things have the same problem with plastic. So don't expect plastic parts to last for 500 years like some people tell you. Maybe Bakelite if it's not broken, but I haven't seen most of the other plastics last anywhere near the length of time they tell you they're gonna last. And that's unfortunate because here we have to fix it. You know, it'd be nice if it would last a lot longer. Remember, I'm pushing this in real hard into the actual blank areas that we cut out. And remember, too much is better than not enough in this case, as we can take off too much. Again, I think if you put in small amounts of this material, you're going to find it's going to be difficult to impossible to add to 
and really have the same level of strength you're going to get with the initial addition of the material. So don't be skimpy. Go around and do every single one of these. You'll probably have to mix up more than one batch of putty, but you want to fill them all up. And as I said, I'm going to fill them up and let them sit overnight before I get back at them. You can let them sit longer than that. Stuff's supposed to get very hard, but the goal here, as you notice, was to get enough surface area to cause everything to bond together real well. If you just had straight sides and it's just a little teeny crack, it's going to probably continue to crack. By doing what we've done, hopefully we've got enough actual surface area that there will not, again, be any cracking in these areas. All right, here we are the following day, and I've done some sanding initially. You can see the putty has gotten quite hard, and it turns out that we have excess, like I said, you really want to have, because what you ultimately want to do is sand the material down. I'm going to show you one spot that I've actually completed. You can see what it looks like here. If I turn it over, you can see if we put the finger contour back in here and rough sanded it. How I'm doing that 80 grit piece of sandpaper, this old scrap, in a hard block. Also, two different rasps. Got a small one and a large one. The rasp is particularly useful when you're going to put your contour back in for your finger grip on the back. Because you can work it around and get everything the way you want to. Right now, I'd recommend the 80 grit sandpaper. And some people will tell you, well, you could power sand this. Yeah, you could... That makes a terrible mess, but more importantly is you're going so fast about you may gouge things you don't want to gouge. So even though this is going to take longer, this is a case where I think I'm better off actually doing it by hand. And at this point, as I said, this is very coarse. I'm working on it with 80 grit sandpaper in these rasps, so I'm not really after the idea of it being ultra smooth. I'm after getting the actual base contour back into the shape of the steering wheel. And sanding across with this long sort of strokes like I'm doing will keep you from getting flat spots. So you need to go through and sand the whole thing and use your rasps and work it over until you have your shape back. <laughs> 